Ark, the land of Musha's, mortal due to a dark force that came from the far reaches of the universe. Marvel, then the die shook. Life was compelled. Peace, pity, logic. Master, son, as well as peace. Still, the dark force comes back. Try to control the world once again. Anticipating his resurrection of the dark force. The no die showed his blood. The Zuchi Denver organizes the righteous Gamamana for the place of himself. Seven skillful and powerful warriors are given the head of the Musha. The engaging battle against the dark design of the Musha Kishinichi and seven Mushas. Although the second generation die shogun inherits the Gamma Crystal, previously used to defeat the until he awakens to his true power. Battle continues for the Musha and Jininshu. The sweet Musha Gundam. Hello and welcome back to another Gunpla review. Today we're taking a look at the Legend DD and the artifact SD Musha Gundam. All right, and getting into the articulation, I'm kind of spoiling the surprise a little early here by stripping all his armor off, but this does make it a bit easier for me to show off the articulation, so yeah. The head is on a barbell joint and can easily get a full rotation. The shoulders are on forward hinge ball joints, so they can get up to the side, out to the front, basically however you want. And then there's also a secondary ball joint in the socket there. The arm itself is on an outward ball joint, though it does like to pop out a bit easily, in my experience. You do get about 90 degrees at the elbow, and the hands are on a ball joint. Then the waist has a side-to-side -side rock, though it doesn't really actually work, but that's fine because there's a ball joint underneath it, which gets plenty of movement. The hips are ball joints, and they stay in a lot better than the arms, and then the feet are on ball joints. So. So despite being such a little guy, the Mushu Gundam actually has really good articulation. Alright, moving on to accessories and gimmicks. This is going to take a while, he comes with a lot of stuff. But uh, before we get into the usual color correction and stickers, I just want to quickly point out, the instructions actually have a little manga in them. Now it's uh, two, so you know, you have to buy all of them to get the full story, but still, full color. Nice art. Then the back has an actual illustrated image of everything it can do, which we'll get into shortly. This is a really nice manual. <laughs> now let's talk about that color correction because, oh boy. <laughs> this is a big sticker sheet. And you'll notice two of the eye stickers aren't used. Uh, should go over that quickly. You can pull the top of the head off. It's not on that tightly and you get a little piece that's reversible. They only give you one, but they give you four eye stickers. So, yeah, really there's no reason to go in with anything aside from forward-facing and smile, sort of happy eyes. You get facing left and facing right, which, I mean, you could use situationally, or if you get duplicates, because, you know, you could make some gyms, and then you have an extra for the eyes, but... Yeah, neat feature, slightly disappointing they don't let you fully use it. Now, <laughs> to be fair, most of this is just gold for the armor. Also, I do want to point out, this is Gundam Marker, this gold, and as you can see, the color match is identical. The vac metal parts in this, uh, the gold plating, is not this gold. Uh, even if you use the stickers, it's not going to color match. I don't know why they did that, but yeah, it's a, it's a much more yellow gold plating, whereas this is more of a bronze-ish? Uh, it's, it's not as yellow. Looks fine, just, you know. But, yeah, uh, these are the head cameras, this is the rifle camera, that's actually for the secondary head, because you do actually get a little gym head, and I didn't paint it because I don't plan on using it, but yeah, you get a visor sticker, though honestly painting it would probably look better. And you get these three little dots here for the hat. You get a little one for the uh, the crotch V. Honestly, painting it's not difficult. 
Uh, you do get a yellow one for the top of the head. So you do have to paint in the uh, Vulcans and the head cameras, and also these little bits of black on the side of the top of the head there. You get three for the hands, two holding hands, and then the uh, the other ones for the open hand. And then the rest is color correction for the armor. You get these two little black ones for the black areas on the chest here. You get the blade of the Naginata. Though it's supposed to be painted all the way down to there anyway, so it wouldn't be fully color accurate. Like I said, you get the uh, camera for the rifle, and uh, this is just two pieces of black plastic, so everything here that's gold is paint. These red ones up here are for the ones on the arm, which is gold plastic. And then the last few are for the helmet. You get these ones down here, which go along the trim, and then these ones over here, which go on the sides. So the stickers give decent coverage, but there's still a few things that need to be painted either way. Like I said, the little bit on the head here, but also, you know, the little bit on the Naginata, the little bit on the rifle, a little bit on the helmet of, uh, it's supposed to be gold all the way around to the back of these side parts, but also the, uh, the black in between these little studs, uh, needs to be painted, because you can just see the outline there of these being just strips that sit in it. So you need to paint that anyway. And finally, the katana, which uh, you need to paint a little bit of gold on the scabbard, and then the entire thing is white plastic. So, uh, yeah, this is fully painted. The blade's silver, red, and gold for the hilt. Also, if you're going to paint it, I would recommend sanding down the inside of the scabbard just a little bit, because otherwise you're going to end up scratching the paint. And I've sanded it down, and you can still see a little bit of scuffing, so, uh, yeah, just, you know, be careful with that. Uh, same thing with the hands. Uh, the hands are fairly tight grip, even without paint, so painting it, probably gonna wanna just slightly modify the hands just to not scratch the paint. Now, let's get this guy suited up, and we'll talk about the fully armored Musha Gundam. Here we have the fully armored Mushi Gundam. Uh, before we get into anything more specific, I do want to point out really quickly, these are ball jointed, these are ball jointed, and this piece is hinged outwards at the shoulder. It feels a little bit weird to have these sort of stick off separately from the actual shoulder in there, but it, it's supposed to look like that, it just feels wrong to me. But yeah, this doesn't really impede the articulation, aside from the head, because of, again, these kind of clash against the shoulders, but there's a hinge in this, so it doesn't affect him being able to look up, which is impressive. The shoulders don't get in the way of the arms at all, the extra bit of armor on the arms don't affect the articulation at all, and he's pretty much the same from the waist down, so that doesn't really affect anything. Also, full weapon storage, which is nice. And just... Wow, he looks good. Need to put in a little bit of work to get him looking this nice, but... Man. This is a good-looking kid. And as for a quick size comparison... I mean, it's, it's an SD, what do you expect? It's not gonna be that big. So, to wrap this review up... Wow, I like this kit! <laughs> I'm not huge on SD, I don't have that many, but yeah, this is good. These old uh, BB kits, anyway, the BB Senshi and Legend BB are really, really good, but this is very nice. And as somebody who really doesn't mind painting kits anyway, I had no problems with just doing a bit of touch up to just, you know, make them look like this. Really, the only other SD kits I think that even come close being this good are the cross silhouette kits. And this may now be one of the favorite kits on my shelf. 
If you have any interest in getting one of these, do yourself a favor, get it. As long as you don't mind doing a little bit of painting, of course. Anyway, that's all for this review. Be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Helps a lot. Subscribe and hit the bell for future reviews. Go follow me on Twitter for updates. And consider supporting me on Patreon so I can keep making reviews just like this one. And as always, till next time, happy building.